soy el fuego que... Hello everybody, welcome back to your Realtor Sensei show. I'm Sandra Jauregui Schlapitz and today our guest is Jay Kinder. Welcome Jay. Hey, how are you doing today? Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you to uh, actually give us your time. Um, Jay was born and raised in Lawton, Oklahoma. He has two awesome boys, Brayden and Kirsten, who keep him grounded all the time. You have to explain that one later. <laughs> <laughs> Jay uh, moved uh, with his family to Puerto Rico. Jay got into real estate at 19 years old and has been learning even ever since. His passion is life is helping others create wealth. I love that one. He loves people more than anything. He loves helping people achieve their goals. Jay Kinder is the co-founder of the National Association of Expert Advisor, Kinder Risk Coaching and co-host of the popular podcast Face to Face with Jay Kinder and Michael Reese. This is the former Jay is the former number two agent for Coldwell Banker, selling 531 homes in his best year. Jay, welcome to our show. It is really an honor to have you in this show. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Uh, tell tell us a little bit about your story. Yeah, um, you know, I think I you know I, I found myself getting into real estate at, at a young age. Um, you know, saw kind of an opportunity um, that you know, in fact, uh, I. I I was mowing yards for my dad's rental properties and uh, I was going to pick up a check. And uh, that day there was a real estate agent that was in his office. He had just bought a coal banker franchise the year I graduated high school. And, um, and the guy was getting a check for like 5,000 something dollars. And I was like, well, what did he do today? And uh, they really didn't know, you know, commissions or how, how the real estate worked or whatever, but I just graduated and was going to college and, uh, so was kind of interested in what this guy had done. I'd been sweating all day and, and my check was like 400 bucks and he would, didn't look like he did anything was making 5,000. So I was interested. I was like, well, tell me, you know, uh, tell me more about this dad. What is this whole real estate thing? And so ended up uh, deciding to get a real estate license. Um, and, you know, like most people struggled for the first few years, you know, learning how to get customers because that's the one thing they don't teach you when you get your real estate license is how to, how to get customers. And uh, so started attending, you know, pretty much anything and everything I could find where someone was sharing information or uh, workshops or um, any type of coaching that I could get my hands on. And, um, you know, started slowly figuring things out and um, eventually kind of saw that there really wasn't a limit to, you know, to what you could accomplish in real estate and continued, uh, continued pushing through those first few years where, you know, selling, you know, 20, you know, 20 something houses my first year, 30 something the next, and then 70 something that was over 100 um, and then 200, a big jump to 233. And uh, after that, you know, 300 plus from there on out. And so uh, I learned a lot along the way. There's a lot more failure than there is success along the way, I think. But um, it, yeah, it was it was a continuous learning journey um, and always trying to solve whatever that next biggest problem is that's in you know, the rock in your shoe um, to get into the, you know, each stage of the business growth. And so um, I've been fortunate and uh, love the industry and, and um, now get to give back and help other agents that are you know going through that same process, you know, not crash into the wall as often, <laughs> hopefully. Um, and uh, you'll learn from the things that um, you know, the principles behind what works and what doesn't work. So you don't have to guess. Yeah, that's that's very important. If without that, I don't think we can go to the next step. So tell me what would be your why? What is your why? Yeah. So yeah, my, my passion, I think, you know, you know, and I wasn't going to correct you. I have four kids, so I got two younger ones, uh -huh. that are, uh, seven and seven and eight. So my, you know, um, my older kids, you know, which Braden, my oldest is 23 and, um, Carson is seven, 17 or 16, almost 17. Uh, this year I'll be 17, but, um, the older ones, you know, in the earlier part of my career, there was time that I would, I didn't mean to or want to, but because the business was, taking over my life. Um, you know, there was weekends that I wasn't available. There was birthdays that I had to leave early. There was showings I had to, you know, go do when, you know, when I was supposed to be at a game or whatever the case may be. And, and, and I was very frustrated that, you know, that, you know, it took so long for me to figure out how to get a handle on my business and, and ultimately get my life back. Even though I was having success, I was doing it at, at a, you know, at a sacrifice that I wasn't happy to have to give. And so, I think out of frustration more than anything, you know, once I figured out how to 
get my time back and, and really truly run a business, run it like a business um, and how to you know set your business up where you know, you're not at the beck and call of every single customer. Um, even though you can provide that level of service, you don't have to give up your evenings and weekends. And so once I, I finally had accomplished that, um, you know, I wanted to share that with people, um, you know, because, you know, it was a, it was a struggle for me and I knew it was a struggle for a lot of others as well. And so, you know, my passion was helping other people not have to go through that. And, um, and, and it's, you know, it's, it's something I would never go back to as being, you know, the slave to my business. Um, and, and you can truly design it, you know, your business to work harder for you than you do for it. And so that's, that's what really gets me excited is helping people, uh, make that shift in their business. You know, first of all, accomplish their goals and, and, um, you live a life, you know, that they're um, proud and happy to be living as, you know, real estate can uh, provide an awful lot of income for someone, but also doing it at, at, um, with some balance and having uh, you know time to spend with your family and not feeling like you're, you know, the more successful you become, the busier you are and the, the more, you know, the more time away from family you have. And that's, and, that, and that's, that's really what drives me. I love to help people build and grow and um, also um, do it at, at um, you know, with a quality of life. Yes, very important. I went exactly through the same. I have three older kids and then I have a new one after a big difference of years. And for my three older ones, I it's not that I wasn't there. I was there, but I wasn't there. Right. I was very successful. I was selling. I had own properties. I, it was like nonstop. When you realize and said, what happened? What did I miss? And when I see them now with their own kids, I'm like, wow, I miss a lot. And when EXP was presented to me, I was like, now I'm going to work for what I'm looking for because you, you can be like successful and do a lot of deals, but then you are a slave of your business, like you just said. Yeah. And it doesn't work like that. It's really like, wow, what can we do to change that? Right. Yep. That it, it's it. I mean, it starts with the, you know, it starts with, you know, uh, having the awareness that it doesn't have to be that way. I think, I think a lot of folks are working so hard. They don't necessarily realize that, Hey, you know, this could be better. Right. And so it starts with that. And then having the desire want to want to, to solve that problem. And, um, and, and then from there, you know, you got to you got to have a process that, you know, or somebody that you're following or something that you're, you know, that you're implementing that's proven to work and, and get you the results you're after. And, and, you know, before you do that, you have to define what that what it what you want it to look like. You have to visualize nothing in nothing in the world actually um, is ever created before it's created in your own mind. And so whether it's a car you're driving or the couch you're sitting on or whatever the case may be, or the computer you're sitting there looking at, it had to be visualized in someone's mind before it was ever created. And so you have to do the same thing with your, what you want your business to look like, what you want your days to look like, what you want your life to look like. And so, you know, you first have to start with that vision of what you want it, you want it to look like. And once you de define that, then, you know, work backwards for, okay, how do we, how do we, how do we execute and make that happen? And with the right mentorship and coaching, um, I've always found that that's the, that's the shortcut, right? You can, you know, there's tons of books you can read and pretty much every problem you might possibly have, there's a solution to it. And, and somebody's probably wrote a book, many books probably on it. Um, there's nothing new out there. You know, everything you know has, has been learned over and over by others, especially in the real estate industry. And so finding the right people to be around, I think, is, is one of the most important things. And one of the things that, that's helped me become successful. And then, you know, I, I was not afraid to invest in myself and invest in the people and, and whoever I thought could help me. Right. Whatever the cost was, it did, to me, I, I've always gotten a return on that investment that was was multiples and multiples higher than the cost it was for me to 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 pay that mentor or coach. And so, um, you know, getting around the right people, I think, and then um, somebody who has not only accomplished what you want to accomplish, but somebody who's also uh, has a track record of success. And this is important um, that have helped other people have get the same result as well. Right. It's, it's one thing to see someone who's successful. It's another thing to see someone who's been successful and then helped other people, meaning they had systems and processes for how they helped other people become successful. And, and that's something I find that's missing in, in a lot of the coaching programs that are out there um, in real estate and was missing for me when I was trying to grow. And so people would be teaching you the referral system and this is the, you know, the oh, by referral only. No, it's not. That's, that's, that's silly. It's not by referral only. It's that's a pillar of the business, but that doesn't define the business, right? It's like, oh, it's prospecting though. No, it's not prospecting only. That's a pillar of the business. And so once you kind of, you know, you you kind of take a step back and look at 
you know, what are all the ways to grow a business? There's multiple things you can do and, and strategies you can employ to uh, create the, you know, create the business that you want. And, and until you have somebody that's a mentor, that's, you know, above where you've been, you know, you really don't know all the ways, right? They, what they bring to the table is well, what are all the ways that you could do this? Why well, did never would have thought about that? I've never, 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 never seen it done this way before. And so, um, you know, that, that's what, value I got out of the mentors and coaches that I've had. And, and, and I think obviously the value that we're able to help, you know, help other agents when they don't necessarily know all the ways to, to solve a problem that we can oftentimes create a shortcut to that success for them. So they don't have to crash into the wall like I had to. And, and uh, that feels good to help people that way. Yes. And um, it's like, like when you get lost because you, you don't know where, where are you going or where you're heading is exactly with your business. If you don't have the, the right person to guide you to the right place, then you won't be able to, I believe you won't be able to make it. So uh, tell me, how do you think we can find that? I know you're saying there is so many coaches, there is so mm. many people, they offer you those emails, they come, we can get you this, we can get you that. Right, right. You know, you can do this. So I know a lot of people invest some money and they're afraid now to, to mm -hmm. go for it. So what would you recommend and what will be, what do you think they can do? Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a great question. And it's certainly, I think the biggest challenge in real estate is twofold. Um, number one, there's so much opportunity. There's so many things that you could do that all of them sometimes sound good, right? And so you're, you know, someone, you know, you, you could hear a lender. So I remember Braden when he first got his real estate license, you know, we had a plan, he understood the plan, we laid out the goals. And then, you know, he would go in, you know, go into, you know, go, go to work on his, you know, on things. And then he would talk to his lender about this buyer lead or whatever that he would take, you know, he'd get to the lender and they would bring up this, this new idea of some other thing, some shiny object. Right. And, and it's like, well, what about focusing on this? Or, and then he'll come back the next day. Well, what about this? You know, and I was talking to this other agent and they're doing this. What about this? And, and so there's, there's all these, what we call shiny objects and, and you have to, you know, you have to kind of know, you know, that, okay, you know, when those are being introduced to you, are they, and you've already chosen a priority, you, you got to stay on your priority. And, and even if it's on something that might be the, the best thing that you need to do, you have to learn um, how to say no until it's time to say yes um, in terms of, you know, interrupting the thing that you're doing right now that you're committed to. And so, um, you know, I think, you know, I, I talked to a lady yesterday and, um, and she, she was, being told by the senior agent that was somehow a mentor for her in her company um, to do these activities related to a farming and a neighborhood. And, you know, I said, well, does this guy have, you know, a large percentage of market share in any neighborhoods and that, you know, that, you know, what, what's the, what's the evidence of success that what he's telling you works. Right. And so she was an engineer. So she was very in tune with the fact that that was not, you know, that was not clear. Um, and that the thing she was doing was not getting any results. And I was like, well, this is the definition of insanity. Everybody wants to think that they know what to do, tell you to do. And, 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 and the problem is, is even if they've had some success, they, they don't necessarily know the steps that they took in order to get to that success. And, you know, sometimes that's never a straight line and you just end up at success and you're like, I don't know how I got here, but it's working now. And so you can't really advise someone on exactly what to do. And, um, and so she's out there doing a lot of stuff, but, but with no actual measures or a, no, no, no scoreboard to know, Hey, I'm doing good. I'm not doing good. I need to prove here or there. Um, or this is, a, you know, this is what I should expect. You know, there's no expectations as to when something should start working. And she's been in the business over a year and no results from this activity. And I said, let's, let's start with stop doing that <laughs> because yeah. every, you know, it's not getting a result. There's no clarity as to what the results should be. It's just, it's just, a, and this is what it drives me crazy, but you know, this, this lady get, gets into real estate. Now she has to have a second job. She believes in, and she believes this person in it. And I believe this person probably is a really nice person, but they're just not qualified to be giving you advice. And that's what you run into and in Facebook land and all the agents and groups you could be a part of and in your office. And, you know, you have to do your due diligence because people mean well, but they don't oftentimes really are not qualified to be telling you what you should be doing.
And, and that's, that's something that I've, you know, experienced and I've seen many, many other agents experience and you want to believe, you know, it's a great company. I like everybody there, um, whatever the case may be, but you're, you're, you're oftentimes not going to learn the best ideas from within the walls of your brick and mortar office for two reasons. One, there's nobody there that has an incentive to make sure you're successful. Uh, that's actually selling real estate at a high level. And, and then secondarily, um, if they were, they would be your competition. But the, the second, the second reason is the agents that are within your brick and mortar office are your competition. So if, if they had a really great idea that was working, they're not going to share it with everybody in the office. And so that, that fundamental issue that most agents don't really recognize, um, it, you know, they, they're getting bad advice and to get good advice, you need to define, you know, what level of success someone needs to have had. Um, and then what, you know, you know, like I mentioned before, what's your track record of success in helping others execute on this plan? And if they don't have the answer to that, then you keep looking. <laughs> that's the that's the uh, the reality is um, if they don't have a track record of helping other people become successful, then then they, they probably haven't taken uh, the time to build a process for how to help you execute on the things that got them to their success. And that and that took me years to figure that out myself. Um, and be able to teach what it was that I did step by step in, in certain areas and pretty much all areas of the business um, in order to teach it and, and, and get someone else the same result. It's not the same. It's, it's one of the harder things to do in life is you, know, you, you do things you don't really know exactly how, you, how you're getting them done, then you're winging it. <laughs> and so you, know, you, you have to be able to define the process and, and break things down to principles. And it's, it's not as easy as, as just, uh, hey, hey, go do this thing I did. And so that's that's what I would do. I, I would continue to search for for someone who's getting the results that you have and that's living the lifestyle that you want to live, and and has a track record of not only doing what you're wanting to do, but also helping others do it as well. Yeah, and I heard to say in some of your past interviews that you said you're going to find the best out there on the world, and you have to follow them. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's that's my mindset. Yep. And this is your, here's the other thing that happens. So, so you're, you're spot on. Um, you know, if you, you know, and, and if, and sometimes people will, will find that mentor and then they'll, they won't get the same exact result and they'll be like, well, that doesn't work. And, um, and I used to have the same kind of mindset. I was like, well, I copied everything you said to do. I did it just like you said. And then I had an experience where I was, um, using a script and I told, you know, none of us have ever has said this before, but I told him the lead, these leads suck is what I told him. <laughs> and, uh, and, um, you know, he said, well, you're not following the script. I said, well, yes, I am. This is my coach. I'm talking to my coach. And he's, he's like, well, send me the recording of your calls and we'll, we'll listen to him. I said, all right. So I sent him the recording of my calls and he said, um, he said, see, you didn't follow the script. I said, what do you mean? I said, I, you know, I listened to him. I know I followed the script. And so we went through it and I had changed it just enough to, changed a little bit of the context of what was being said. And, um, and he said, follow the damn script. Like I told you, and you'll get the results. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. So I did. And it was the craziest thing was like, it immediately started working. And I was like, wow, like how many times in life have I thought that I was being a good copycatter? I jokingly say that it's modeling success is the principle here, but, but jokingly, I would say I'm a pretty good copycatter. And, 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 uh, I became a very, very good copycatter after that because the results were the results were there. And it was like, you're just dumb, Jay. You got to just listen better and take better notes and like make sure when something's not working, go back and say, well, where am I not following what you told me? Because I'm missing something. Because you're getting these results and everyone else is getting the results and I'm not. Then I did something wrong. And when you start having that mindset instead of, well, that's not working. Um, you just learn better, right? You learn and you learn that, you know, there's, it's, if there's something wrong, it's probably something you're doing instead of that the process didn't work. That's worked for so many other people. Right. And so that was a, a big aha I had early in, you know, in my career. And fortunately that coach that was, you know, hard enough on me to say like, Hey, no, listen, you know, you ain't following the script. I know this works and, and, you know, listen to my calls and, and kind of give me that aha moment. Um, but oftentimes that's where I see agents struggle is they think that they're doing exactly what, what was you know, they were told to do or, or pro follow a process and, or say the exact same words. And they, they change it up, make it their own. They kind of entrepreneur, their, you know, add their little spice to things and then they don't get the result. And, um, you know, you can do that, but do it after you've copied it exactly. So you have at least a measure that you can say, okay, well, I'm going to change it, do this. And if it gets you better results, then keep doing it. If not, then go back to doing it the other way. And um, instead of changing it before, you know, before you have results. 
Yeah, that, that, that is, a, I think, a great advice for everybody because I went through the same. I didn't believe in scripts. I never used them until I realized and say, yes, I'm getting only referrals because they know me already. But how can I go to the other world? Right. Then you say, okay, you know what? If I want to pick up the phone and talk to somebody that I know, if I don't know the scripts, I'm not going to get the call because they really won't even listen to you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, great. I, I, I love that's, so a, that's, a, that's a big one. Yeah, that is really a big one. So um, how did, when did you decide to change from, you were already successful, and I know that you explained a little bit before about no time. When and what made you decide to move to EXP? Real? Yeah. So, 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 um, you know, I kind of mentioned like my my frustration with the industry and kind of what got me into coaching and training and, and helping agents. Um, but there was still a, a hot, at the highest level of success for most agents. There's still the struggle. Um, there's the struggle of of really this is more for you know teams and once you build a team and you, and you have you know a bunch of agents on your team but it's recruiting and retention of talent there's all this consistent churn of your best people eventually going out on their own at some point that's always been a, a problem you know for us that had you know we had an independent brokerage and before we moved over to exp and, and um most of the teams that we coached all the same ch challenges and so that was something we knew that needed to be solved but we didn't know exactly how to solve it we were always trying to solve it and we saw that that at exp um that it was just truly better for every agent um the stock having ownership um is a huge deal um you know when you when you're selling real estate you know it's hard enough to save for taxes much less save for the future uh, so having something that's building there as an asset for you um towards the end of your career i think everybody would look back if i mean i, I wish i had stock in um in all the companies that you know in the company as I, I was with um for the you know 25 years almost i, I 24 years, 25 years next year that I've been doing this. And so, you know, but that's, you know, that didn't exist. And so, you know, stock was a big deal. The passive income opportunity for, um, you know, the, if you build a, a big team here at EXP and, and attract agents to the company, you get compensated and revenue share from agents. That's a huge piece uh, for, for teams and for people that have influence or that, um, you know, want to build a, a team or an, even an international team. It just opens the door for so much opportunity and, and a passive income stream that's, quite unbelievable and most people don't really understand how big that opportunity is but it's it that, that those are those were things that we just saw that this was a platform that no matter what your vision is if you're an independent brokerage if you're a team if you're an, just a solo agent you don't want to build a team like everything that you need is provided to you and and the platform for you to build anything you may want which at the time we were building um a brokerage you know international well, not international we were building it um just within the united states in canada and um we saw this was a platform that would allow us to just do it easier faster much much faster than than um the way we were trying to grow um prior to that so it was a, it was a big opportunity with a, a company that that truly had the things that were difficult i think for for most people to have you know implemented in their own business and so um, it just truly was better for agents. And, you know, when you when you see something that's better for agents, you always say we always say yes to opportunity until we have to say no. And so we kept looking and investigating and investigating it. And it took a year before we really, truly saw what we needed to see. Um, and then, you know, we never look back. Best decision we've ever made. Blessed to be a part of this company and, and add value to the people that join with us. That's part of part of what we we do is. Um, you know, where we used to sell a lot of, of coaching, training and, and things to real estate agents and masterminds and events and all these kinds of things um, and charge for that, charge a lot for that. Um, we now get to do that um, as part of the business model being compensated by EXP on the back end um, through this revenue share program. We can basically just add value to the agents that join with us. And um, instead of having to run your credit card, uh, you know, we just help you for free. And that's for me, that's that feels a lot better. I don't mind charging because I know I'm worth it. But at the end of the day, um, uh, the ability for us to have an impact on more people's lives because of EXP um, is um, is the reason that we joined. We saw that we could do what we were doing um, and we're already, you know, shoot, probably pacing to be eight or 10 X more impact, you know, more agents lives, you know, at EXP than we could have on our own um, with the vision that we were, you know, that we were moving towards. So pretty, pretty cool, pretty cool to be able to say that and, and be a part of this. But, you know, for us, it's about 
you know, how, how do we help more people accomplish their goals? That's, you know, that's what inspires me every day. Um, and, and, you know, the opportunities like this to come on and, and add value and hopefully shed some light on, you know, if you're, if you're struggling or where you're at and you're not where you want to be and you want somebody to help you with that, that, you know, there's, you know, EXP just is, isn't just a brokerage. It's a place where um, you can get the support, the training, the tools and uh, the coaching that you need in order to, to get to the next level. And um, you don't have to pay for it. And that's a, it's a, pretty big thing to be able to say yeah i think it's amazing you just have to leverage all what it's there for us for free right and, um that's um where i am right now i'm very thankful that i end up in exp and i was asked before and didn't want it but the minute that i joined like you said um i can be it's a blessing in my right. life and i and i want to be a blessing for the ones that they are coming Right. As agents and the building the the, uh, the exp family so I'm, I'm really very happy and i know we don't have that much time but i wanted to, to know um you talk about double our business mm -hmm. what would be short um what can we do to do that yeah so um, the, the, it always sounds like when you think of doubling, you think of everything doubling, right? So like every problem you have doubles, all the, you know, the work that you're doing doubles and, and it's really not how, how, how it works. And, um, one of the most fascinating things that I learned in, in my mentorship with Jay Abraham is, is, um, you know, the power of exponential growth. And in order to double, um, your business, you essentially have to monthly, you have to improve 5.95% compounded monthly. So um, every month you improve by 6%. Um, and then every, all the activities and things that you're doing the next month, you improve it by 6%, much more manageable number. Doubling sounds like a lot, but just improving in areas of the business. And there's there's essentially three main ways that you can um, improve and, and grow your business. There's only three ways. And so um, one is increasing, you know, the, the average dollar you make per transaction, which there's um, increasing the you know the, the average sale price, adding you know a fee structure, charging more. There's there's a few different ways that you can in, improve the average commission per deal, all the way to the point that you could um, you could also have uh, um, you could also get paid on the loan, for instance. So I, I know uh, you know I owned a mortgage company. This was how I applied that, but you know you don't have to necessarily own a mortgage company, but you could on every deal you could get paid the real estate commission and you could get paid on the loan. So like that's increasing the dollar for one transaction. That's increasing the dollar amount per transaction. You could start targeting um, double the average sale price in the neighborhood uh, with your marketing efforts. And so that, that could increase the average over time. And so um, that's, that's one way increase the average dollar per, you can get better at skills, right? So if you've ever had to discount your commission because you didn't know how to overcome that objection of someone asking for a discount, um, you could get better skills. That, that might be another way we make sure that you never have to discount again, improve your offer, add more value to the, value proposition for a seller, um, getting a buyer to sign a buyer's agreement that you're getting paid 3% and you're not just going to take whatever the co-brokerage is offering. These are all things that you can do in, in areas that we can you know, look at to, to grow that one pillar, which is increase the average dollar per sale. And so we evaluate all of those things. That's one. Um, and and we, we would prioritize based on which one of these are going to be the easiest to implement, the, um, the, um, fastest return on investment, meaning that you do this and it's going to get, you know, it's going to start paying dividends, you know, when this month, next month, six months from now, um, an example would be if, if you, um, if someone came to you with an idea that was for working short sales, for instance, um, for those of you who remember short sales, they took forever. Yes. And, you know, you, so if you do that, you, let's say you invested a thousand dollars a month into some kind of campaign going after the short sale opportunities, your, your actual return on investment, you would you would be investing, let's say if it was 12 months before you you, you really ever closed your first deal, that, that would have been a $12,000 investment that you made no in a year before you're ever getting a return. What I would say is let's probably not use that as our number one objective because we want to get paid sooner than a year from now if we're going to make any investments and then maybe later on add that down, down the road. But um, strategically, it doesn't make the most sense. So you're, you're evaluating things based upon how quickly it's going to return cash back to you. So if you're going to invest in your business, you want to get the return as quickly as you can. So you have more dollars to, to invest in the growth and, and the next ideas. And so just um, the second the second thing is is uh, increasing the frequency of purchase. This one's a lot more difficult for real estate. But if you think about it in like retail, 
or any other type of industry, um, the frequency of purchase would be like at, at your local convenience store. If, if you could get people to come back three times and you know, three more times in a month, um, you know, they fill up their gas, you know, let's say every couple of weeks, um, but they came in for something else. So Walgreens is a great example of, you know, they, you know, back in the day they did photo development and, and, um, and they wanted you to come in and develop your photos because they knew on average a person spent $38 worth of stuff. If you came in to, if you walked through the front doors of a Walgreens, and so they, that was, um, uh, you know, if you could get more people through the front door, um, you know, you, you know, more often the same people to come back, then you were going to get, you know, now they got to come back and get their photos. Um, and they, they were able to really ramp up Walgreens and make them one of the most dominant brands because of understanding frequency of purchase and real estate. I would relate that to, um, you know, frequency of purchase. Builders do a lot of more deals with you. Investors buy bulk properties over time with you. Um, you're not going to probably get somebody who just bought a home to buy another one, you know, next month or the year or whatever. But there are certain, you know, certain uh, classes of business where they do more business with you over time. So one client equals more deals, right? And so that's one, uh, another, um, another one of those, um, um, you know, areas that we look at and say, how can we, how can we leverage this principle to increase, um, uh, increase your, your, your average dollar per sale. Now you're looking at more deals, you know, per, per customer that you're doing business with. And, and, um, these are all things that are just, um, you know, again, they're industry, they're principles, um, that you can apply that apply to all other industries. And that's why I love Jay Abraham was because Jay understood and he had been in over 465 different industries. So he understood things like there's, there are companies out there today that literally do 100% of their business by referral. What can we adapt, adopt and apply that they're doing? What systems do they have in place that we can leverage to put in place in our real estate businesses? And that's the kind of thinking, you know, he would always have me, you know, trying to think through. And he had so many different ideas because he'd seen it so many different ways. It was just incredible how a lot of that could be applied to our real estate business uh, for sure. Yeah. The, the, like I was talking yesterday with one of the one agent and if I would have the guidance and if I would have all that would I have today, uh, my database will be huge. Right. Because in the past I wasn't doing that. I wasn't sending emails to past clients. I wasn't texting. I wasn't not worried to maintain that. And I think that was the biggest mistake in, in my career. And then I right. realized today, okay, I'm not going to see the past, but now I'm going to go forward with learning that that mistake, that failure in not maintaining a database. I remember yeah. I, I wrote, I had everything handwritten because there was no systems, there was nothing. Now today we have all these these tools and, and great, great, um, service everywhere so we have to use them and i i agree with with you um jay i really appreciate that you gave us your time today sure. i'm very happy to be part of exp very happy to be a honey badger which <laughs> can bring another day <laughs> Maybe right, right. Another day to explain what is that right and, um, uh, we will see you next time Absolutely. Appreciate your time. Hope you have a great day. And for anybody out there listening, if you're, if you, if you're not where you want to be and you're hungry, humble and smart, and you want to get to the next level, I would say, reach out to Sandra. We'd love to have a conversation. If we can help you with growing your business, uh, we'd love to do that. Thank you very much, Jay. Take care. Bye. Okay, take care.